iPadOS 16 is officially available, so let's go over five of the best features that you need to know. Stage Manager is the most interesting and obviously the biggest change coming to iPads in iPadOS 16. And what was first announced as an M1 or M2 iPad feature only, Apple has actually since released it on iPadOS 16 beta that opened this feature up to some A12X and A12Z chips like the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros. In order to activate Stage Manager, swipe down to get into Control Center and then tap the Stage Manager icon. If you do not see this icon, you'll need to go into Settings, Control Center, and then add the Stage Manager shortcut. Once you're launched into Stage Manager, you'll see a list of apps that are currently open on the left side, and then whatever app you're currently in front and center. From here, you can resize your window to your liking, drag another app from the side panel for multitasking, etc. You can add a few different apps if you want and switch between those app groups and other groups that you might have created in just a few taps. Throughout the course of this beta, it's actually been a pretty buggy feature, and it was kind of a mess, but hopefully Apple was able to get things cleaned up with the official release. There are some other display modes available in iPadOS 16, like Reference Mode and Display Zoom. Reference Mode allows your 12.9 inch iPad Pro to display reference color for popular color standards, as well as SDR and HDR video formats. So when you're working on some upcoming project and you wanna make sure you're getting good color accuracy across all displays, you can shoot your workflow over via sidecar to your iPad Pro, and everything should hopefully match up for reference. Now display zoom just lets you choose between a few different view modes, like having more space or having larger text alongside the default view that we're all used to on the iPad. And so if you wanna turn either of these display modes on, you can of course find them in the settings menu under display and brightness section. Next up, we have a few apps to talk about. The first one is the Weather app, which is the first time we've actually had a full-blown first-party weather app on the iPad, and it's just like what you get on your iPhone, but bigger. There's deeper data available like air quality, local forecasts, hourly, 10-day, and more, and you can get severe weather notifications, wind and rain information, and so much more. Another app that I wanna highlight is the Home app, which received a massive UI overhaul in iOS 16, and that has basically carried over to the iPad as the Home app is essentially rebuilt from the ground up. You do get a sidebar with easy to get to categories and rooms, and the main page is just one giant layout that's easy to find what you're looking for. The multi-camera view puts your cameras front and center, and I just love that I can scroll through this one page to change or toggle on whatever device I might need. The Mail app received a couple of very useful features like undo send, schedule message to be sent out at a later date, tomorrow or at a custom time. And you can also get reminders to follow up on an email or come back to a message later. And there's improved search functionality so that you can get more accurate and complete results during a search of your inbox. Lastly, we have a couple of bonus features that are not available right now, but should be coming later this year. And that's external display support and the Freeform app. So let's start with the Freeform app, which will allow users to sketch and jot down notes with the Apple Pencil, but also insert web links, documents, video, and audio into one large document that can be easily shared amongst family, friends, and coworkers. Users can collaborate in real time and work together on a project in Freeform while also partaking in a FaceTime call, which is actually a pretty cool concept iPad OS 16 also offers users external display support with resolutions up to 6K when in conjunction with Stage Manager. Now you can view multiple apps on both your iPad and your external display. You can drag and drop files between screens and it just really feels like a true dual display style workflow, like having your MacBook and a secondary monitor available at the same time. Now we did get to test this out initially during the first few betas. It didn't work super well and Apple has actually removed this feature and is going to introduce it in a future update coming later this year, but for those who want to use multiple displays while working on their iPad, this could be a game-changing feature for you when it in fact launches later this year. Of course, these are just some of the many new features that are launching on iPadOS 16 today, and so if you want to see another video highlighting some tips and tricks or even hidden features, be sure to let us know in the comments down below. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.